He plays with great energy. He's explosive. And he finishes runs with great pad level. So, uh, you know, and, and he doesn't want to make direct contact. He wants to edge defenders, which always allows you to finish runs and come out the other end. So uh, it's exciting to watch him do that. We kind of thought that when we recruited him, and he's developed. And uh, here we go, starting to show on the field. We lost Carlos High, and, and people were saying, and the coach was saying, we don't have, necessarily have to replace him with one guy. It looked like he was fairly close to doing that on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday, he was. I mean, he, he did the job that you would want uh, a Carlos Hyde to do. Um, but he's a different type of runner than Carlos. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Ezekiel's playing great right now. We just got to keep him going. Ed, you guys went into that game, I think, still searching for some answers on the line. Did you come out of it with the answers that you wanted to find? Uh, absolutely. I mean, are you saying we were searching for answers? Because I didn't say that. No, it just seemed like you guys, that's I mean, your perception. Yeah. I, that's it not my like perception or that wasn't our perception. We pretty much the Kent State game, we played really well. We knew exactly who we wanted to play. We rotated guys in. And in this game, we played exactly who we wanted to play, rotated them in. And they played really well. And so uh, we feel like we're headed in the right direction. Are we a finished product? No. Are we coming along pretty nicely? Yes. Um, I mean, there's not really anything different other than we're developing some consistency and playing with a good demeanor. And we're also uh, getting more guys in the game. And uh, we got more guys in the Kent game, and then we got more guys in this game. And the more guys you get in the game, the more you let them play, and the more they can uh, show what they can do in game situations. So. Uh, you know, we were able to do that with Chase Ferris and some other guys, so that's been good. So we're starting to develop some depth with that. Yeah, and along those same lines, it seems like you guys have found your top six guys with Chase rotating in there a little bit. You think that's going to be the plan moving forward for the foreseeable future? That this Yeah, right now I'd say those six guys and Joel Hale starting to come along too, the guy that played defensive line last year and moved over, and he's starting to get comfortable and like to see if we could start – uh, factored him into the rotation more as well. So uh, probably six heading towards seven, maybe, if we can get there. And you guys are, have been working in a young quarterback and some young guys on the line. What do you see with JT and, and the offensive line? You know, Urban was just Experience and confidence is what they didn't have, and now they're starting to get experience and confidence. I mean, I, I would imagine, you know, your quarterback and your line being on the same page. Yeah, I think I think there's some of that. I mean, it's probably – you guys probably overstate that a little bit. But, I mean, the offensive line has to be all on the same page with their business. I mean, as far as the quarterback, he has his business. And if we take care of ours, his life's better. If he takes care of his, our life's better. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, definitely there's some chemistry as far as off the field and – at practice with confidence in our quarterback, and then he has confidence in the line. And when you play with confidence, you're more aggressive. You make better decisions and uh, better, usually better results. So I think the product of the last couple of games that's starting to come happen. Ruben was talking about like a couple times when JT was getting you guys into different plays that maybe you got a false start here or there. But he said that was on JT doing that. Just what's your perspective on JT? sort of being able to do that and, and making sure you guys are adjusting to the defense on the field? Yeah, I think he's, uh, you know, taking a, a quarterback role and, and trying to make some audibles and direct traffic out there, and there's a process to that. And that's something that uh, is ongoing, and he's getting better and better at that. He's very capable of doing that mentally and then just doing it on the field and everybody communicating because uh, it was a very loud environment. You know, and a lot of that is just communication, you know, uh, as far as false starts because they're basing their trigger up front on his cadence. And if we're going fast, which I think you probably noticed we went fast. We ran 111 plays, so we are kind of going fast. Uh, when you're going fast and we're yelling and talking and communicating and he's telling them plays and the defense is yelling and trying to get the guys lined up, there's a lot of noise and then there's 100 and, 
8,000 people that were pretty excited. There's a lot of noise out there, and sometimes that's where the communication has to be clear, clean, and very uh, discernible. So that's what we got to get a little better at. Yeah, uh, it, everybody we talked to after the game, the Virginia Tech game, said y'all had not really worked on the bear look or much on what, what Virginia Tech threw at you, mm -hmm. obviously, and stayed in it. Uh, but since then, everybody's taking pride. And I think Urban even used the term bear beater plays. <laughs> y'all had on Saturday night. But uh, with a young with a young offensive line, is it <laughs> – is, it, is that the process you go through about trying to cover all the waterfront as you get into a season, and then do you kind of see it click? Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful with overexposing young guys who haven't played a lot. And, again, we're not really young up front. We're just inexperienced. I mean, if you fifth-year senior and third-year guys and Elfline and Jacoby and, you know, Billy Price is the young one. So you got three guys who've been here three years and one guy who's been here five years, and then Chase has been four. So uh, just inexperience would probably be the better term than young. Um, but, yeah, you, you have to be careful about putting too much in their mind and having them think about too many things and practicing this big spectrum of stuff, and then what are you good at? So you try to give them what you think they need to go into that game and be prepared to do it well. And... Uh, you know, that was an area that Virginia Tech threw at us that we hadn't prepared as much for. Um, it, you know, in my 31 years, I'd never been exposed to that. So, you know, I'm sorry, but it just had never happened in 31 years of my coaching that I've seen that defense. So, but what I'm saying is, is there such thing as an offensive line going over a hump a little bit where you where you feel like now it's a uh, a veteran group or an experienced group? Is that, do you, are you starting to feel that with this? Group? Yeah, absolutely. I mean. It's you can see it in their eyes, the confidence they have, and they they feel uh, that they can go out and play, and they know how to adjust to little things that happen in the game, and they can make sideline adjustments, and that all is a process again of comfort, confidence, and just playing, and that process is is happening, and we just need it to continue to happen as we go into Big Ten play. Yeah, I, I've watched them uh, here this morning some. Uh, what was your question regarding? Your impressions? Why, I mean, they're giving up 435 yards a game. Yeah, I try not to get too much into stats because sometimes those can get be deceiving based on how games are played and what happens. But, uh, you know, they're a, a four-man front. They have some change-ups. They... They're going to be different than anyone we played in terms of some of the things they do coverage-wise. That, And the coverage affects the run game because it's how they support the run because everybody's trying to get extra guys down to support the run and how they do that. So it's going to be a little bit different there, but they're a basic four-down team, 4-2, uh, you know. And uh, I think they play really hard. I think they're competitive guys. I think they, you know, I see them giving great effort, and uh, I think they're, you know, they've got a lot of seniors, I noticed, on their defense in the two deep. So uh, I think that's going to be a challenge to go over there and uh, take take it on the road and play good on the road against a, a veteran group that's going to try to, you know, play hard and, and try to get after us in their first Big Ten game. Yeah. 